Okay, so this uh, this is the Aveng um, longer version of the video that I promised. Um, so, and I'm not gonna I'm gonna try and make this not so long, pretty short actually. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to look at the income statement, which shows us the profit and loss. Um, what we are going to do is we're gonna go to the bottom here, and we're going to go to this is on Yahoo Finance, by the way. Ticker symbol AEG, yes AEG. It's the income statement, and we're looking at 2017. So in 2017, they made 23 billion. This is in thousands. So it's 23 billion, almost in three and a half billion. Then they made 30 billion in 27, 2018, which is great. Then 25 billion in 2019. Then. Twenty billion in 2020. So this tells me that from 2018, 2018 was the peak, and yeah, from 2018, 2019, 2020, um, things did not look good. 2021, again, unless the whole vaccine thing kicks in, there's going to be horrible numbers for Aveng. Even if the vaccine does come through, I don't see some great numbers for Aveng anyway. So I would say 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, and 2021 are going to be three horrible years at a peak at 2018 so that's the one so um and, and in terms of the cost of revenue it actually increased right so in 2017 when they made 23 and a half billion they put in 26 billion it cost them 26 billion to make 23 billion which is weird right okay so cost so in a way it's kind of like they really made a loss so it wasn't even a great year then then it cost them 28 billion to make 30 billion. So, um, yeah, and the same and saying the quickest way for us to look at this is looking at the cross profit. The cross profit, negative 3 billion, right? So it was horrible. Then they made almost 2 billion in 2018 when it peaked. Then it dropped to a billion in, prof in gross profit, 971. So, again, as of 2018, um it was peaked and then after that it started chopping in terms of their um gross profit then from their gross profit again um then the operating income which has also been dropping um are we just gonna i'm just gonna try and run through this quick because we've got three um books to go through <coughs> um we're gonna go straight to interest income has been dropping right so interest income things that they've invested in in terms of interest income that's been dropping from 181 million to about 31 32 million interest expenses have been dropping as well which is a good thing but their net income is in the negative and that's basically a loss so this is bottom the this is basically the bottom line they've lost about 500 million that's what they've lost they've lost about 500 million uh this year now let's quickly then go to the so they've lost about 500 million now let's go back remember their net income was made to 500 million right name their net income let's go to the balance sheet which is something i probably should have started with my apologies the balance sheet i don't know why i mixed it how i mixed that up So next is um where was I? My apologies for that. Um total assets. So there's seventeen in twenty seventeen at seventeen billion. Then in twenty eighteen they sold off. Right? I'm assuming at this point that they sold the assets. Let's see if we can see that. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. That's 17 billion non current. They sold some non current assets. Let's see if we write. Let's see if we write. Oh, it was under goodwill. That's why. No, yeah, it was under goodwill. Yes, it was a lot. It was under non um, goodwill, I suppose. Anyway. Before we get too deep and then it becomes like an hour long 
So, um, there, where were we? Oh, sorry, yes, assets. Dropped from 17 to 15 billion in 2018, right? Then 2019, dropped to 12 billion. 2020, dropped to 3. So, for the, since 2017, all the way up until 2020, the assets have been dropping, which is kind of the opposite of what you want from a company. You generally want the assets to grow, but they've been selling off assets or getting rid of the assets. The liabilities that you would say have been also dropping 11, 12, 9, 8. However, take a look at this. This is equity. 6, 2, 2, 1, right? But this basically means that even though they're selling these assets, um, they're trying to sell the assets to offset the liabilities, what Tesla wants to try and do. They want to sell assets to try and offset liabilities so their balance sheet looks better. So they want to sell the assets which basically cost money so that they don't owe that money anymore so they settle the debt so that their balance sheet looks better the equity grows but the equity has been dropping what so the assets have been dropping and the equity has been dropping so not only are they selling the assets but they're also still making less with whatever they have whatever they have left so that alone is a red flag to me um because if anything the equity should be rising if they're selling off the right assets <clears throat> Excuse me. Or they or it might be that they're selling the assets for a discount. So they're selling the assets for a discount and they have a shortfall that they still have to pay off. That might be the other case. Which again still tells me then that they're struggling. If you have to sell your assets at a discount, um it means again to me it's a red flag that you're struggling. Um then we go to common stock equity. It's been dropping. Right, the common stock equity has been dropping. Um, the total debt has been dropping, which is good, but it also still tells me that, um, let me begin here, sorry, let me begin, let me, let me begin here, um, the net tangible assets have been dropping from 5 billion to about a billion, so, right, so, again, that just tells me it's a sell-off. Then on top of that, they've got working capital, which has been dropping from 898, almost a billion to like 1 million to 126 to negative, almost 700 million negative in working capital. Right. Um, not great. Um, then invested capital, not sure because it should have, but I guess it's supposed to be a balance sheet. So for some reason, they're investing, we don't know what they're invested in or where that, where that capital is invested from, um, but it's been dropping for a while. Their book value has been dropping for a while as well. The book value of the company has been dropping for a while. Their debt went from 3 billion to 3 billion to 2 billion to almost 3 billion again. So, again, you know, they were trying to pay off their debts, but it's risen again. Uh, so yeah, again, we we might say let's let's give this a benefit of a doubt based on the pandemic, but again, it's not looking good. The net debt of almost a billion, it's gone from or just over a billion to just under a billion. Um, yeah, and then issues shared, shared issue they issued another nineteen million shares. On top of that. Um, of those, they issued, yeah, they issued 19 million shares, and then of those shares, they issued, they also issued um, ordinary shares, they issued 19 million ordinary shares. They've been issuing about 19 million. That's weird. No, sorry, 19 billion shares, which again is, is another. They went from issuing not, almost uh, just under a billion shares yeah, and here. Yeah, 2017-2018 to 2019 all of a sudden issuing 19 billion shares they were they hadn't even reached a billion so this was just trying to raise capital now if you're really trying to raise capital by doing that that is going to um what is it called it's going to dilute your share price amazingly so there's a chance that if you to go back to the graph you may find that in 2019, 
um, are then fell amazingly. And again, it might be management, but this alone did not help, along with this 19 billion that they've added. And then they've also got treasure shares. These are the treasure shares numbers that they have. So they have, again, I'm, I'm not sure whether this is how many they should per year or just that exist at that time. Um, yeah. So to me, that, that, that is an issue. And then they've also got treasury shares that exist as well. Um, so that is, so the balance sheet to me just doesn't look pretty. And then we've already done this. So that's going to be pointless. It's going to be a decently short video. And stuff. Then we're going to go to the cash flow statements. Cash flow statement goes back to 2017. Um, they started off at a negative in 2017 and now 430. Then they're down a billion and then now this obviously does not coincide with the income statements of the net income which was oh it's a 429 and they've got positive 279 which is not supposed to be the case right they're supposed to start off on negative 429 unless they probably went out and issued shares or they went and um sorted out debt so went out and got more debt to try and um have positive um operating cash flow of about 279 million um which again looking at 2020 you know i'm i'm, I'm skeptical but yeah it's either they it's the issue of shares that they did or the debt that they took out i would say they took out debt so they've got 279 million and then of the 279 million is 284 invested investing cash flow would be nice if i could see where it was invested but anyway because i think that's supposed to show um but let's assume they invested it in, in, in themselves let's hope um or divested anyway um then the finance and cash flow from finances then the in cash position has been dropping um, from one from almost two billion to two billion to one point six billion to one point three billion, and if 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 we open that quicker bits, we've got changes in cash um to the negative, um which basically means they're not really doing too well. We want a positive change in cash, and long story short, um the beginning of the cash position is always better than the end of the cash position. So in other words, then their net cash position is not as good as it was at the beginning. So again, that just tells me that they're burning through cash and then they're just raising more debt or issuing more shares, just trying to survive. Um, and there we go, issuing the issued issuance of debt. Right, so they issued, it might be incorrect, but I think here they issued more debt as well. Um, 115 billion in debt, which was issued. Um, and then they obviously paying off on this debt as well. So they are paying four hundred forty seven million in debt, and they've got negative almost five hundred million in free cash flow. This means they're basically burning out about five hundred million uh, a year in in cash flow. So the company is basically not surviving. It's it's cash flow negative. It's so basically. It's making a loss. The company is making a loss. It's not. It's not. It's not profitable. It's making a loss. It's in debt, so it's not like it's got a whole lot of assets, um, which might be the other reason. In fact, now that I think about it, is they're probably selling those assets because they couldn't. They might not have been able to get too much more debt, or they're trying to fix their balance sheet so they can get debt in future. But long story short. They are not making a profit or making a loss. Not the best sign. Then they're in debt. Um, I forgot what the debt was, but they've got 1.7 billion in assets, 2.8 billion in debt. So they've got a billion in debt, if I remember correctly. Um, and then on top of that, they've also got um, negative cash flow. They, on top of that, they're burning through 500 million. So what I'm saying here is, I'm not saying it's impossible to jump back, and they could jump back. I'm just saying it's it's it's, it's I would I would put more money into Cecil because at least I know Cecil's plan. I put more money into Cecil 
than Aven, probably because I've been following Aven's management plan as to how they plan to get out of this. But if they're burning through cash, they're at a loss, and they've got massive debt, then there's no positive that I'm seeing, unless there's a change in the management structure itself, so that at least they get to a point where they cash flow positive, which is what Sasso's trying to do. Sasso's trying to accept the situation and then say, first, the thing we're going to do is you're going to be cash flow positive. We accept being at a loss, but you're going to be cash flow positive. Once you cash flow positive, you can work towards becoming profitable and also trying to fix their balance sheet. Actually, that's the first thing they do. They're trying to sell off assets that are costing them money, so they fix their balance sheet and they, and they streamline the company and then the company becomes cash flow positive, which is what they're aiming to be, and then eventually becomes profitable. And that's what they're trying to do. I don't know what Evan's trying to do because they're at a loss, they're in debt, and they're burning through cash. So let's let's before you invest any more money into a bank, my recommendation would just be just rather save it and wait until the end of the year and see whether there is any change in their balance sheet, income statement or cash flow statement. Anyway. Let's try and keep this video short. Thank you for watching, for tuning in. Please do click the subscribe button, the share, and the thumbs up button to so help me do more videos. Thank you.